Hello everyone, my name is Paul. This is a story about my reading life. And this is a story about me living an entire year without home internet, not watching television, not watching any streaming entertainment, and just reading books and talking to you all about the books I've read, the stories I've read. I hope you enjoy these videos. Each week we'll have a vlog like video talking about the things I've read and just my experience overall. I hope you stay around and you find meaning in what I share. Okay, so here is a tour of my new apartment. Here is the table with my keys and stuff where I drop things off. Of course, my books are right here in the corner as you enter the door. These are my two books, main two bookshelves. Um, I hope to eventually <laughs> get rid of all these books in the future. Um, here is my main reading chair, my basket of what I'm about to read next. I think Andy Weir and uh, Darcy Badger is in there, and some Mrs. Marvel. This is my amazing reading light that I just got, that I just found out yesterday that it has a battery in it so when the power goes out it still works so here is my kitchen i don't cook a whole i mean i cook a lot but i don't cook like big things but there's a lot of counter space and a lot of cupboards that i really like so i can hide a lot of stuff here is my room there's another bookshelf some of the things that i might want to read sooner than later there is my reading light one of the best things I've ever bought. And this is my workout room slash, um, I guess, office, even though I don't have internet right now. So that is my new apartment. I just finished In the Garden of Spite by Camilla Bruce. This is about the Black Widow of the Port. It's a fictionalized story about a real woman that was one of the first serial killers in America. And it's about a woman that has a horrible experience in uh, Norway, but moves to America for a fresh start, but she just can't quite escape uh, wanting to kill and hurt men. Uh, this is a feminism take on a serial killer where she is killing these men that do bad things to her. Uh, but as time goes on, she loses her way and she just starts killing indiscriminately. Uh, what I liked about this story are the themes that came up uh, when I was reading it. The theme of evil, is it something that starts when you are born, something you're born with, or is it something you learn? Is it something that uh, you decide to do? And then the whole theme of justice and revenge. What type of awful thing could be done to you where revenge might possibly be justified? It also had issues with pacing and the writing seemed uneven at times. The writing wasn't all that amazing, but I still enjoyed it and I still would recommend it for those who like uh, like serial killer type things. There are a lot of trigger warnings in this book. So if trigger warnings are an issue for you, I would probably stay clear of this one. This is my book reviewing spot. And so when you see me in this spot in the future, you'll be knowing that I'm reviewing a book. All right, so we're in the short fiction chair. This is the spot where I'm gonna record my reactions to short fiction like short stories, uh, novelettes, and novellas. Today, we have a novella. It's called The Survival of Molly Southbourne by Tad Thompson. This is the second book in these Molly Southbourne books. Uh, my thoughts on this are, I don't think this was necessary. I think the first book was a great book, and it ended on a very interesting note. Like, it was very... Uh, I don't want to spoil the first book too much, but basically this young woman is able to replicate herself from her blood and then her, 
clones try to kill her. <laughs> it's a little dark, the first book, and there's a lot of body horror in both books. In this book, uh, we have one of the clones and she's finding out information about how this all came to be, uh, who she is, who her parents were, the organization they belong to, things like that. Like we're getting a lot of backstory and then we find out that there are other clones as well. And it's a story that sets up a world, sets up a series. And so uh, I probably will continue to read this, but it wasn't my favorite. And uh, I think the first book is worth reading. But if you decide not to read the second book, I don't think it, you're missing a whole lot, okay? So I have a short story recommendation for everyone. It is called Food Man by Lisa Tuttle. It was a Pseudopod 808, the podcast. Um, it was originally in the anthology Crank. And it's about a young woman's eating disorder and her control of that disorder. Uh, very sensitive topic. And horror can only handle these sensitive topics at times. And she saves her food under her bed, but that food ends up turning into a man. And she's at the age of, you know, just after puberty. And so she's having sexual urges as well. And so she's dealing with the sexual urges, plus trying to control her life with the eating disorder. And she ends up sleeping with this being created from food. And what I liked about this story is that it explored eating disorders in a very honest and uh, non sugar coated way. And as someone that has not struggled with one, it made me understand more about the control issues when it comes to eating disorders. And she also uh, dealt with binge eating as well later in the story. And I think what is happening here is that society is putting so much pressure on people to look a certain way. And when people either don't look a certain way or they get attention for looking a certain way, because like in this story, she started losing weight because she was starting to get attention from men and she did not like that. And it's a sense that of her being able to control her self, her environment. And uh, it's sad. And I liked how in the podcast, it talked about like, if you're struggling with eating disorders, what numbers to call, to reach out for help, even though it's a very serious subject in a story is not necessarily the best at shining a, a positive light on eating disorders. Pseudopod has the responsibility also to give their listeners information that can help people. And I appreciate that about their uh, podcast. So uh, Pseudopod is number 808. It's called Food Man by Lisa Tuttle. Okay, so this is Well Matched by Jen DeLuca. It's the third story in this contemporary romance series that started with well met and then there's another one called well played uh it all centers around this renaissance fair and how these 20 somethings fall in love but in this one it is about a 40 year old mother dating and meeting a younger man that's like in his early 30s and it's one of those uh fake dating trope things where he needs a fake girlfriend to impress his parents and his family. And uh, of course they fall in love. Uh, and it's Mitch in April, if you've read any of the other books. And I love that it's Mitch in April. They're my favorite characters in the stories. Uh, Mitch is just a fantastic uh, guy. He acts like he's a hothead and a meathead, but he has a like a sweet side to him. 
and he's just unapologetically him. He's like super loyal to his friends as well, which is really cool. Uh, I really enjoyed this, thought it was fantastic, and I'm looking forward to the fourth book. This one probably is my favorite of the three so far. Hey everyone, I have another uh, story recommendation for you all. Uh, this one's from Uncanny Magazine, the uh, March-April edition. It's called The Goldfish Man by Maureen McHugh, and this was fantastic. One of my favorite stories of the year so far. Uh, it's about a woman who becomes homeless. She just is down on her luck. It's during COVID times. Uh, she has to live in her car. She's losing her job. And it's her struggle. And there's not really a whole lot of science fiction elements to this until later in the story. It just had so much compassion and uh, love towards this person. Uh, reading something about a homeless person, something about someone that's down on their luck, is something that I really enjoy because you know we all have we all have been in a horrible position, but uh, some of us maybe not to that level viewpoint that you usually don't see. And I hope that there are more stories uh, from the perspective of homeless people or very poor people, people living in poverty, because I really enjoy those quite a bit. Hey everyone, I'm going to recommend an entire issue. It's Dark Magazine, the March issue of 2022. A fantastic issue. Almost all the stories were just chilling, uh, amazing. Some of them were like really difficult to read, but fantastic. There was Shrine by Kirsten McDermott. This is one where she finds a strange boy on the side of the road arguing with a father who lost her his daughter on that uh, like strip of highway. And so this woman takes the boy away from the guy, but she finds out that there's something weird going on with the kid and it's good, it's good. Uh, Callie Wallace with all her teeth talks about a mother changing and becoming a little bit, have a little bit more backbone against her abusive husband. But is it really the same mother? It's good, it's good. And then Rebecca Hirsch Garcia. This one's called Mother. There's definitely a theme here. And this is creepy. It's about people that kidnap a new mother every now and again. Ah, oh, chills. And then lastly, we have Susan Palumbo uh, Doen. This is about a young woman who dies, but her ghost stays around her family and her family's farm and uh, just kind of sees what happens with her not around and that that one was sad but also really emotional and fantastic so so yeah march the uh, dark issue i really liked it a lot yeah it's good stuff so i have one more book to talk about this week and that is sea of tranquility by emily st john man wait yeah emily st john mandel she has a lot of names Anyways, I really enjoyed this story. I think reading The Glass Hotel before this just a few months ago really helped me appreciate all the interweavings that she does in her novels. In this one, we have many different characters and different timelines and how they're interconnected with each other. It all boils down to a strange occurrence that happens in the woods where people are experiencing things out of time and we have someone that travels back in time to investigate what is really going on here. And in the end, this story is about humanity and what you would do to help humanity. And also about loneliness, you know, what it's like to live a solitude life and how we can better interact and connect with people. Fantastic book. I would recommend it if you like literary fiction. Uh, there is science fiction elements in here, but it's mostly a literary fiction book. Very short read as well. I read this pretty much in one day. Uh, fantastic book. All right, so those were the things that I read the last week. Other than that, um, going without the internet has been very difficult the first week. There's been little small things that I've wanted to do that I had to wait until I either got to work or I visited my parents. Uh, they're going to be moving out probably in about a month or so, so not having them around is going to be difficult as well. 
you know, uh, it was at times really boring and I had to uh, think of something to do. So when I got too antsy, I would um, go work out in the room or go for a walk or uh, I would pick up something different that I was reading or honestly, I would go take a nap. <laughs> um, this week I went to a library conference in Maryland, Delaware. Uh, it was over in Cambridge, Maryland. So I got to see the Chesapeake Bay. While I was there, I went to a panel called uh, Joy-Centric Libraries, How to Have Joy at Your Library, uh, Celebrating Library Milestones. I, I went to a TikTok reader's advisory thing and realized that TikTok is basically what BookTube was five years ago, only 10 times larger. Uh, Book Buzz 2022, all like new books that are coming out in the fall, late summer, which was, which was fantastic. I had a lot of fun with that. Um, then I went to a, a Delaware, Library Association business meeting. Uh, the keynote speaker talked about trauma in a library context as an informed approach to helping patrons. And then I went to anime boot camp for something fun, just to learn more about manga and anime. And I really enjoyed that one. Those guys did such a good, good job. Overall, everyone did fantastic. Uh, so this coming week, I hope to continue to uh, eat better, uh, move around more. In the last week, I've lost two pounds. So I started at 282.5, I'm down to 280.4. So that's good. I uh, hope to read this week, A Snake, A Snake Falls to Earth by Darcy Little Badger. And Hail Mary by Andy Weir, and also some short fiction from like Clark's World, Uncanny, um, The Cecil Skies, the things that I usually read, Nightmare, Dark. So I will see you next week. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Looking back at the footage, I need to be a little bit more like just carefree and, and not so serious. So, so I'll, I'll talk to you guys. Let me know what you thought of this video and how I can improve it. Thank you so much.